Hi there. Welcome to English for Everyone. My name is Lisa. I'd like to address the false accusations that have been made and set the record straight. There is nothing wrong with having an accent. There is nothing wrong with making mistakes while speaking in your daily life. But if you present yourself as an authority on the subject and teach the wrong information, that's a different story. I've learned so much from this video, Marina. You're an amazing teacher. Guys, if you like how I teach you tenses, I have a whole course on English language tenses. It's really detailed, really interactive with a lot of exercises. So if you're interested in speaking English like a native speaker, continue watching this video and make sure to watch it up to the very end. For example, you have millions of viewers trust in you that you teach them how to speak like a native speaker with an American accent and you tell them not to say happy birthday, you tell them not to say the correct thing, you tell them not to say what native speakers say, and instead you teach them to say happy 18 years old. You can also replace happy birthday with happy plus a person's age, but just make sure that people aren't afraid of their age because some people don't like to share it, like I don't know, women or men sometimes don't like to share their age. So it's okay for kids, I would say, Happy 16 years old, happy 18 years old. Normally it will be an age that's also like a border between, I don't know, childhood and adulthood from being a baby to being a, a kid. If you don't bother to Google it before you teach it, it shows blatant disrespect. It shows a lack of effort, a lack of research. It shows incompetence. The reason why we decided to make this video is because we received a lot of hateful comments, including name calling, and inappropriate language inspired by this video. I'd like to address the false accusations that have been made. Let's listen to the first one. Yeah, well, the thing is, many of the examples that were given in those videos were taken from her vlogs, where she's casually speaking or while explaining something. It's not true. Every single example was taken from her teaching channel Lingua Marina. It wasn't about her making mistakes while speaking in her daily life. It was about her teaching you incorrect English. There were absolutely no examples taken from her vlogs because we believe there is nothing wrong with making mistakes while speaking in your daily life. And honestly, you know, you focusing on those mistakes, most people don't even notice. Is it casual talking? Not if you tell your viewers, listen to me, pay attention, write it down. It's not casual talking. Now this is a compilation of my best classes, so make sure you have a notebook, make sure you're all ears. Let's do it. Let's learn to speak like a native. This class is all about phrases that native speakers use. Idioms, slang phrases, phrasal verbs. There's going to be a lot of important information, so don't forget to write the new words down. And honestly, I'd consider most of them as slip of the tongues or careless speaking. Is it a slip of the tongue? It's not a slip of the tongue when you write your mistakes on the screen and then teach the wrong information. It's not a slip of the tongue. And the truth is, this is what English sounds like in real life. It is spoken with different sounds and different syntax. And yes, sometimes not according to grammar books but it is spoken. Is it an accent? Is it what English sounds like? There is a difference between having an accent and teaching the wrong pronunciation of a word. If you teach calm instead of comb, it's not an accent. It's not what English sounds like. It's teaching the wrong pronunciation of a word. Calm, calm, something you use for your hair, calm. How much do you know about that, Kevin? creating consistent content and speaking freely in a second language. Well, Kevin speaks two languages fluently. He's also been teaching English for 20 years. I speak three languages. English is my third language. We've been teaching English for 20 years. We teach group classes, private classes. We teach classes online and in person. We know a lot about the learning process. If you develop bad habits, those mistakes are engraved in your brain and it can take years to unlearn something and relearn it. And by the way, am I the only one who is bothered by the fact that a white male native speaker is telling a successful non-native English speaking woman to basically keep her head down, be quiet and stop showing up because she doesn't sound like, well, him? 
a white native speaker can't correct mistakes? Actually, it was me, a non-native speaker, a teacher, a woman, who found these videos and had the idea to expose the incompetent teacher. It was me, a non-native speaker, who knows what it takes to learn a language. It's the fear of experiencing exactly what you and everyone else in the comments mocking Marina are doing to Marina. Is it mocking? Is it making fun of someone when you say, this is not correct, this is correct, without any other comments? Is it really mocking? Here are some examples of mocking you can find on YouTube. So reality... Wait, what? A lot of people told me that... You people actually, say fifth? Fifth, yeah. And so... There well, you're stupid. Fight me. <laughs> I'm okay, my advanced English language learner, let's check your advanced vocabulary. You know, my daughter, who's three years old, knows the word sad. Come up with something else. At least disappointed. The next one. Sad. Again, this one. You said afraid? Ramp. Basic. Scared? Ooh. Basic. Fearful is better. I like it. This comment is not about her making mistakes. This comment is about her smug attitude. It's about the fact that she hasn't corrected any of her videos. But instead, she makes videos bragging about how much money she earns on YouTube teaching you incorrect English. YouTube pays me around twenty to $25,000 a month. And if we look at top 10 videos that I've created, this one was created in 2020 and it generated $440. These are the most recent ones. These are 2022, 2022, this one, 2018. $247 last month, 2020, $230. And this long tail goes on and on and on. If you just scroll through all of my uh, cash generating videos, a lot of them, I would say more than a half of them would be from the previous years. If you're interested in speaking English as a native speaker without any mistakes, continue watching this video. The next word that we love to use is word many. I have many problems, I have many shoes, I have many friends. Uh, we say it all the time. Great alternatives are handful. I have handful of friends. First, a handful is a noun that you can count. And that's why we say a handful. A is for one. A handful. But the most important thing, a handful means a small amount. A small amount, not many. For example, I have a handful of friends. It means I have a few friends, not many. I invited a lot of people to the party, but only a handful of them showed up. It means only a few people showed up, not many. So remember, a handful means a small amount. I found that lots of organizations and teams claim they foster innovation, but out of those, I'd say only a handful of them are actually doing it. Besides its creators, I am one of only a handful of people ever to hold this sphere. Most people have just a handful of friends. Um, growing up as a kid in school, I had a handful of friends that really had my back. So remember, a handful means a small amount. Today we're going to talk about articles. Articles are very important in English. If you don't use articles, native speakers might misunderstand you. For example, This is iron. It's not silver. It's not gold. It's iron. Am I right? This is iron. Oh, she's not talking about metal. She's talking about this object. I misunderstood her because she didn't use an article. It's a problem. So today we're going to talk about articles. Let's get started. A. Uh, a uh is for one. If you're talking about an object that you can count, for example, one fork, two forks, three forks, and you want to say one fork, you can say, this is a fork. This is one fork. Or it's called a fork. Let's listen. This is spatula. It's not correct to say, this is spatula. It's an object. You can count it. You can say, one spatula, two spatulas, three spatulas. And that's why we say, this is a spatula. This is one spatula. This is a spatula. Let's practice. What is this? 
That's right. This is a spatula. Good job. Let's listen. This is called peeler. It's not correct to say this is called peeler. It's an object. You can say one peeler, two peelers, three peelers. It's countable. So if you want to say one peeler, we say this is a peeler. This is called a peeler. One peeler. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right. It's called a peeler. Good job. Let's listen. This is called corkscrew. It's not correct to say it's called corkscrew. It's an object. You can count it. You can say one corkscrew. And that's why we say this is called a corkscrew. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right. It's called a corkscrew. Good job. Let's listen. This is called horn. This is called horn is not correct because you can count the object. You can say one horn, two horns, three horns. This is one horn. This is a horn. This is called a horn. Let's practice. What is this called? That's right. This is called a horn. Good job. Let's listen. This glass in front of me is called windshield in the US. It's not correct to say this is windshield. It's an object. You can count it. You can say one windshield, two windshields, three windshields. And that's why we say this is called a windshield. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right. This is called a windshield. Good job. Let's listen. It's called emergency brake. It's not correct to say it's called emergency brake. It's an object. You can say a brake, two brakes, three brakes. But here the word emergency starts with a vowel. And that's why we say an emergency brake. It's called an emergency brake. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right, it's called an emergency brake. So remember, if a word starts with a vowel, we say an apple, an engineer, an emergency brake. And that's why it's not correct to say This is iron. It's an object. You can count it. You can say one iron, two irons, three irons. The word iron starts with a vowel. And that's why we say, it's called an iron. This is an iron. I have an iron. Do you have an iron? Good job. Let's listen. It has speedometer. It's not correct to say it has speedometer. It's an object. You can say one speedometer, two speedometers, three speedometers. And that's why we say it has a speedometer. It has one speedometer. The car has a speedometer. Let's practice. Does it have a speedometer? That's right. It has a speedometer. Good job. Let's listen. We have two o'clock opening next Wednesday, if that works. It's not correct to say I have two o'clock opening. One opening, two openings, three openings. An opening. I have a two o'clock opening. Let's practice. Does she have a two o'clock opening? That's right. She has a two o'clock opening. Good job. It's not correct to say. This is bikini. That's right. It's not correct to say. This is bikini. It's an object that you can count. You can say one bikini, two bikinis. And that's why we say, this is a bikini. A is for one. This is a bikini. A bikini is a two-piece bathing suit. I have a bikini. Or I can say, I have two bikinis. She has a bikini. Do you have a bikini? Today we're going to learn how to use this word correctly. Let's get started. Uh, she divorced from Andy. 
Or you could just say she divorced Andy. So there are two ways to say this correctly. Divorce from Andy, divorce Andy. It's not correct to say she divorced from Andy. If you want to use this word as a verb, the preposition from is not necessary. She divorced Andy. Let's look at some examples. His wife eventually divorced him. His wife, Robin Givens, divorced him. She divorced him. But if you want to use this word as a noun, a divorce, then we say she got a divorce from him. Let's look at some examples. He claimed he had previously tried to get a divorce from Kardashian. The last thing I wanted in the world was to get a divorce from my husband because I loved him. Or if you want to use it as an adjective, she's divorced. Then we say she is divorced from Andy. It's not very common, but it is correct. Remember, if you want to use this word as a verb, to divorce, the preposition from is not necessary. It's not correct to say. Uh, she divorced from Andy. We say she divorced Andy. She divorced him. Thank you for watching. And if you want to learn American English and sound more natural, subscribe to our channel. Bye.